record on this computer. And can everybody see Jerry's story out there on their page? Just give them a wave, Jerry, so they all know who they're looking at. Hello, everybody. Okay, well, Jerry, Jerry's story. <laughs> what do you say about Jerry's story? Um, as with many of the callers, his was one of the names that I saw on almost every third record that I bought, and I was buying records rampantly when I started calling. Uh, Jerry started calling way back in about 1969, which means he's now been calling for over 50 years. And I would say in that time, it's more than possible that he knows a thing or two that's definitely making him worth listening to when he speaks. Uh, he's the owner, producer, and recording artist. Uh, I think he also sweeps up the studio for Royal Records, which is one of the major recording levels. He served on the Color Lab Board of Governors for a number of years, and he's a dedicated professional with a strong regard to preserving the activity of square dancing. Um, I asked Jerry here today, not only because he's been involved with it, but also I believe he's the creator of what has now become the Sustainable Square Dance Pro Program, or the SSD program as it's known, and uh, I believe he uses it very successfully in Iowa where he lives. Uh, one of the questions that came up, I'm asked a lot of questions about SSD. There's a lot of myths and questions and confusions about the program, about what it is. And rather than me giving my opinion, I figured it's better to get the guy that put it all together here to ask. So um, that way we can all start with the same playbook, the same understanding. Jerry's given his time to be here. We're very thankful for that. So he's gonna give a short presentation and he's gonna be available for talks and discussions uh, if anybody has any questions for it. So I'm going to hand it on with no further ado. Everybody say welcome to Jerry's story. Thank you very much, Mel. And I, mean, I really appreciate the opportunity to tell you about SSD. As you can see on the screen, we've changed the name. Officially, it's not changed yet, but it's in committee right now, and everybody's unanimous. It's just such a good name. Uh, Bob Riggs came up with it, and uh, it's just awesome, I think. Fits today, what we're doing. Uh, I, uh, the way that we're the plan is is to pretty much keep the sustainable thing between us callers because we know that this is what it takes if we want to be sustainable. But as far as the dancers are concerned, they don't, they don't care about that. They don't even need to know about that. So the term, and it doesn't change the, the, the acronym, the SSD, it's still so uh, SSD social square dancing. So I think that's a good thing moving in the right direction. Um, I want to give you just a short history of how we how we got here. 25 years ago, uh, I've already been in the Rio Grande Valley for several years, calling square dances in the wintertime for the snowbirds, uh, along with several other callers, Jerry Haig and Larry Letson and Gary Shoemake and Daryl Lipscomb and uh, on and on. There's a bunch of us down there, lots of dancers and big classes, but we've noticed that we were turning out dancers that had no place to dance. There was nobody wanting to accommodate them as they came north. And it was frustrating uh, because we lost a lot of them. Uh, there was no place for them to go. All they could find was somebody that would in mainstream and headed to plus and going too fast. And there just wasn't a good place. All we could teach down there, we had about 10 to 12 weeks of teaching time, and we could get through about 50 calls, um, standard application. And all of the routines, and we kind of all know what the standard application routines were. So that was, a, that was achievable. Uh, but we, we got to thinking that if nobody else is going to accommodate them, and there was a few places, but by and large, the, it really was non non-existent. But our thinking was, if we're gonna if we're gonna do this, if we're the Lone Ranger, we may as well make the list the way we want it. Well, we didn't think we needed Alamandars. We didn't think we needed a few of these other calls. So we started cutting it down and and come up with a list of calls called we call it the Club 50 program, and we used that very successfully for years. And then about 22 years ago, 
at Caller Lab convention in a bar, I'm sure. A lot of us got to talking about doing the same thing uh, with the with the Caller Lab programs because we really didn't have that particular level of dancing anywhere. So we got to we got to talking about it and decided hey, we'll make a we'll make a push for it. But we went about it completely wrong, hindsight being 2020. The Caller Lab programs are what they are. They, they, they're there and, and they're not going to change. And we were trying to change them and it upset Australia. It upset England. It upset Germany. It upset Japan. The world was upset. Half of it, half of the, at least half the United States anyway, and some of the other countries maybe, but by and large, it was worth what happened to the overall uh, feeling amongst all the callers. And we certainly don't want to go through that again. So that's why uh, the SSD program will be a program that work, will run parallel with the Caller Lab programs. It will not replace anything. We don't want it to. And if you think about it, there's a couple of really good reasons. If you look at it, the Caller Lab programs are nothing but an escalator, B1, B2, mainstream, plus A1, A2, C1, and you get the picture. It's an escalator. So many callers' interpretation of an entry program and my interpretation of an entry program are vastly different. So many times I hear this garbage that I've got a basic program, and then we go right into mainstream, and then we go right into plus, and, and that's not an entry program. I guess you could call it that. It's an entry onto the escalator of color lab levels, I guess. So we're, we're really having a difficult time with that. So we've had to emphasize destination. We don't, and that's another good reason. Why would we want to put SSD, social square dancing, on that escalator? I, I can't come up with a good reason why. So anyway, Target 2000 came and gone, and it was a 50-50 deal. Went to the tie, went to the home team, and and so the status quo remained for 20 years. And now here we are again. Uh, some people say, "Oh, you're just repackaging the same same thing." I don't think so. I think we've learned an awful lot. At least I have, uh, a, lo a, a an awful lot. I think that uh, the uh, the SSD program now is more in tune to so many different things. It's more than just a list of calls. It's more than just a program. Um, I think it's a way to restructure our, our entire art of calling square dancing. We've lost a lot of it and that's due to the rush to plus and the site resolution stuff that came along. These was, that was a lethal concoction. The plus list was so easy to call, uh, made a lot of lazy callers out of us. It happened to me. I had to pull myself out of it. I seen it happen. I said, oh, my God, this is too easy. I need to go back, start doing my homework, working my, my relationship, site calling, that I knew how to site call. That never got taught. All they taught was site resolution. But the relationships, knowing, recognizing what you're looking at out there, that kind of went to the wayside with the site resolution. And that, along with the, the, the plus calls being so easy to call and Year after year, we've seen the deterioration of, of teaching and, and calling in general. And I, I contribute those two factors right there to be the, the, the two biggest culprits. There were others, but those were the two, two biggest ones. And so why, why would we want to get on that escalator? We, we, we don't want to. We, and we want to run alongside of it. And anybody that wants to run along with us, they can do that. If they still want to run B1, B2, they're welcome to do that. If you want to run mainstream DBD, uh, and if you're welcome to do that, nothing has to change. Um, we're going to run alongside you and 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 try to uh, try to build groups of dancers that don't really want to go on any further than that. They want to social dance, and that's what we're going to try to to create. And I, I think it's I think it's a good thing. Uh, it, the other. The other thing that it, that it addresses is stop and go dancing. I don't know if you guys have noticed or girls have noticed, but stop and go dancing is, it's awful. And, and 
there's a, there's many reasons why, but I guarantee you one of the most most prevalent reasons is this escalator of levels. Nobody ever stops and dances. They're always in teach mode. Well, teach mode is stop and go. Well, that's boiled over to, that's the only thing they can do now is stop and go, teach mode. Because on this escalator of levels, where are they stopping to dance? In most cases, they're not. They're just continually learning. So they really never get out of that teach mode. And then guys like me or somebody comes in and calls a dance for them that's perfectly timed to the right on the beat, and they think we're faster than hell, and we, and, and, and we get uh, our chops busted for it. And I tell you what, it really irritates me when I know that I'm not, you know, we've changed. A lot of us have changed to, to, to suit that. Uh, the other thing is, is uh, sight resolution. That's when most of the time the, Tommy, the timing breaks down and the stop and go dancing starts when, they, when we start hunting and fishing and trying to pair up the, our people when we should have been paying attention and following them along all the time. So there's lots of reasons for the stop and go, but I, I attribute most of it to uh, it's just what we're talking about here. So that's my two cents worth, and that's, that's kind of put us where we're at. Um, I want to ask this question. What does should be taught from more than a single formation and arrangement mean? What does that mean? <clears throat> I don't know what it means. It's been on the bottom of our teaching, mainstream teaching list for years. Most callers don't even know it's there. It also had in the beginning the um, the the most of the inference was on was on uh, and and dancing for two years before you go on to the next program and most of the calls should these calls should be taught from more it still says this should be taught from more than a single formation and arrangement and the sentiment was then and probably still is for a lot of people and danced for a couple of years before you move on a lot of areas did that and it worked quite well but it was something that just wasn't sustainable Human nature takes over and kicks our butt every time on that deal. But it's such a vague statement. I'm asking the EC now. I want to put in a formal letter. We've talked about it, and they know I'm concerned about it. That needs to be changed. That needs to come off. Should be taught from more than a single formation and arrangement. What the hell does that mean? Different people, you're going to get 12 different answers, ranging from... <laughs> simply rotating the box 90 degrees to some ungodly formation and arrangement that nobody's ever seen before. So that sure didn't help us with standardization of our problems. It kind of made it worse. Dancers in America can't go to Germany and dance because they teach all position and, uh, a lot of people can't, mingle anyway anymore so i we've and we ruined our signature program mainstream we we're, we're the culprits yeah now we've got some kind of quasi plus program in america i don't know how it is in australia and you know, other parts of the world i i see it as being a little bit better than america but i also see everybody pretty much on the same spiral downwards my idea along with Johnny Preston and several other callers that understand symmetry, that's what should be investigated and taught. And that is something the SSD program is going to be very uh, keen on, is introducing this symmetry. A good example of a, one of the most popular calls we have is reverse flutter wheel. And that's all we're talking about. If you can flutter wheel, you can reverse flutter wheel. Now, not all symmetry is good. The symmetry to right and left through is horrible. That's a left and right through and it sucks. It's just terrible. But there's a lot of good symmetry. A left-handed recycle with a girl on the end of the wave, that's the symmetry to a right-handed recycle with a boy on the end of the wave. That's good body flow and, and we need to go counterclockwise. We don't need to do everything from more than a single formation and arrangement. We need good, smooth, flowing choreography. Symmetry could add a lot to that. It also forces callers to use things that uh, they don't really use very much, like reverse wheel around. 
Well, Wheel Around is on the number one lesson of the SSD teaching program. So when it comes time at the end of the lessons to start showing some variety, reverse wheel around comes in very nicely and it creates body flow to left hand things like reverse flutter wheels. Uh, it, it opens the door up to clockwise and counterclockwise rotations. It also opens the door up to um, left handed things. A lot of the choreography that you guys and gals know already, uh, you'll be able to utilize that. Uh, for example, if you know a, a head square through four and swing through and the boys run and Ferris wheel and the centers star through and back away your home, well, it'll work the same way. Heads left square through four, left swing through, girls run, Ferris wheel, and the center star through back away your home. And those are the kind of things that I think would benefit new dancers if you wanted to do a little workshop on something because they've been taught plain vanilla standard application. Now it's time to do a little variety. Why would we want to go to this hard stuff first? We don't need the hard stuff. We need a little bit of symmetry to get them going clockwise and counterclockwise and left and right and utilize the tools and the calls that we've got on the SSD teaching list. And we're going to get to that. And you can ask me all kinds of questions about that later. But symmetry, I've got a paper on that. Anybody that would like that, I will get it to Mel and Mel can get it out to, to everybody. Um, it's a work in progress. So um, understand that. But my good uh, editor, Steve Turner, is looked it over and I think we've pretty much got the bugs out of it but uh, uh, and if you if Steve's welcome to pass that along to anybody that would like it as well he's got a, a copy of it so all right well let me see we got one more screen and then we can talk a little bit well there we are now we can talk about the list um, like I said the way the list came about was the calls that we were using in the Rio Grande Valley. Um, we weren't using wheel around at the time. We added that on later uh, and we added that on for a big part of it was because of the symmetry value to wheel around. You got reverse wheel around and wheel around, uh, you know, you can Ferris wheel and centers reverse wheel around that teaches them body flow or you can go to a left-handed two-phase line and Ferris wheel around, but it also teaches them body flow. And that's a, that's a good thing for, for, and it's so simple. You know, when you start thinking symmetry, it, the, the dancers can feel it, just like reverse flutter is so darn simple. The dancers can feel it. They can flutter wheel, they feel it. Reverse flutter, huh? Pretty soon they're doing it. They can recycle with the boy on the end from a right-hand wave. They can recycle from a left-hand wave with the girl on the end and unwind that wave counterclockwise. If you're off to the right, that's the way you're going it creates nice flowing patterns, symmetry. And then the other type of symmetry is uh, location symmetry, you know, like, like a ballet type thing. You don't want to dance in one spot all the time, but you want to move around to different spots on the floor. And, and, and this, these are all things that is in line to help colors entertain dancers with a limited vocabulary in a high fashion. That's what we have to do is we need to upgrade, upgrade our standards. We need better flowing choreography. We need to get away from this puzzle solving stuff. Leave that for another day, another group, another time. If you want to get focused on rebuilding the activity, please consider these things that we're talking about because it all hinges on us getting better at the art of calling square dances. Get our timing back. We don't need this stop and go stuff. Dancers can move. You know, I always say, they always say, well, they're getting old. Now they've, I don't know. They, they say that to me all the time. And where I, I worked 33 years in the Rio Grande Valley for retired people. It was the same age all the time. They were always old. And I never called like that to them. Most of, most of the friends that I had never called like that to them. However, over the past 
I don't know, 10 years, I guess. I've seen this start creeping in, this stop and go dancing. It's driving me crazy to the point where the next person that comes and tells me I'm calling fast, I'm going to pull my hair out. It'll look like Steve. <laughs> anyway, thank you all for this opportunity. And I know you've got tons of questions. Um, I'm going to pull my uh, 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 teaching list up here and we can go through that. If you've got questions of why a call is on there or something, or just in general, you know, why, why don't we, you know, a lot of people say, why don't we use B1 and B2? Well, that's a good question. Why don't we, why don't you, are you, then that's a pretty silly question to be asking me, <laughs> you know, if you are, then hallelujah, go right ahead and use it. We like a list that has just a little bit more of the things that we can use. Still, they want to spend the time. Oh, I have to have clover leaf. You know, come on. If you get hung up on the list, we're never going to make any progress. And here's the deal. If spin the top means that much to you, well, how long does it take to show it to your group? 15 seconds? Teach it. Have fun with it. But if you got dancers coming in from other groups, maybe you might want to consider not using that. It's common sense, kind of. And I think Mel and I were talking before that, this always fails when people do not provide a place for these people to dance. One of the major questions that I get asked, you know, are plus clubs. They have, they, they don't understand it. They won't, they don't, they don't open up their ears long enough so you could, so you can even explain it to them. If they would only realize all the money that they're wasting right now doing these conventional classes, start in September, beat the crap out of them, try to get them through plus sometime in the spring, losing three quarters of them or more along the way, creating a negative transfer back to our recruitment base. This has been going on for, for years. If they only realized that all they would have to do is replace that nostalgic, worthless class that they have every Tuesday night for their Friday night Mavericks Plus Club, if they would replace it with an SSD program and work on making that successful and dance with them and help them along and make it successful and do not have another plus class until that is a flourishing success. Once that is a flourishing success, then that will be your lifeline, your sustainability for the rest of that club's career. I guarantee you, if you protect it, but if you rob it and pillage and rape it and fish it dry, like we've done all along, well, hell, ain't nothing going to work, is it? Don't matter what we do. But it's the attitude that we're going to have to change along with this. And that's part of the SSD spirit. All these good things are part of an SSD spirit. It's like starting over. We know where we screwed up before. We need more sociability in our, in our groups. We need more dancing instead of this stop and go and puzzle solving stuff. So I'm open to questions. I'm pretty passionate about what we can do as a society if we can just focus. That's well, a tough be, word. Before the questions start, Jerry, thank you very much. You're um, welcome, I've got a much. few comments that have come to me, so I'm just going to go through them quickly and then I'll put up the list that you were talking about so we can discuss the sure. list. Yeah. Okay. Um, the first one was a comment, which I think you covered very well. It was earlier on before you started talking about site calling. Um, the comment was stop and go doesn't happen when you use modules in site calling. Uh, my comment was you are an exceptional caller. If that is your rule and you've been doing it for a long time because it's one of the big problems, but uh, I think you covered that quite adequately. <laughs> It happens a lot because we've lost that uh, flow sequence. Um, yes. A second comment. S SSD is a competition that will strip the basic programs. Um, and there was a couple of subs that went with that. Uh, what about learning the rest of the movements and other formations by definition so they can go somewhere else and dance? I think you've addressed that. 
the next one is where do dancers go and basic or where do dancers go and dance basic now we need a new entry program that they can go and dance and stay at and the next program they can pick up the rest of the basics and all the all position stuff uh, did you want to make a quick comment on that well yeah i mean forget about all position right now i mean if that's what you want to do then that that's fine but you're not going to be able to uh, stay in an SSD model we want to do we want to do standard applications simple routines just get them dancing and then they're so energetic right there to bring their friends this is where we miss the boat all along if we keep them in class and, and beat the crap out of them and make them learn all position this and all position that well when the hell are they supposed to bring their friends and if they get on the caller lab escalator when are they supposed to bring their friends when when does that escalator stop so we can say, hey, come on, we want you to go get your friends and, and then have them chase you all the way up this escalator. Hurry up, hurry up. No, you slow down. No, hurry up, hurry up. This has been maddening for 30 years. It's time it comes to a stop. We don't want all position dancing. We do if they want to go on to a plus and, and advanced and challenge, sure. But that's not what we're talking about here. It's nothing to do with that. And as far as being able to go somewhere and dance, there's no place for them to go and dance now. There's nobody running these type programs. Uh, one beautiful lady I talked to earlier in Sweden, she's starting one. Okay, maybe if this catches on, maybe somebody next door will, will start one too, and then you can go back and forth. But to be honest, Dancers at this level could care less about traveling 50 miles to go to a day dance. They don't care about going to the state convention. They do not care about buying a petticoat and crinoline and, and boots and all this stuff. They don't care about that. They want to get together and socialize and, and dance, period. And if, if we can get that out of our head, now if the state associations, if they want to accommodate an SSD program, which I think they will, We've got a lot of summits and roundtables scheduled and planned, and we're in the works that over this next year, coming up to a vote in, in Dallas next year at the convention. So you're going to be hearing a lot about this. And uh, I, think, I think once everybody understands that nothing in their world has to change, if they want to jump on this bandwagon, I don't see it in competition with something that's not even there. How can it be in competition with B1, B2? If that's working for you, then why is or what we're doing competition? And if you start a SSD group, then you then you might have to sit down and say, well, you know, who's winning and losing here? I don't, I can't see you doing that. If something's working for you, why would you try something else? Now, if it's not working for you, that's a good reason then. But if 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 you're working a basic one, basic two program right now. Why, and there's no place for those dancers to go dance either. So why in the world would you even consider doing this? If you're successful, if you're not successful, that's a whole nother story. Why wouldn't you want to come and jump on this bandwagon and let's roll down the road and see, maybe this has some validity to it. Maybe we can do two or three classes a year. Maybe this does reinstill friends, bring friends, bring friends. Maybe there are a lot of good points about this that we're just foo-fooing because we are so used to doing the same things over and over and over, even if they're not working. It's maddening to me. Another one that came up, um, there was actually a few of these, but positive comments about the change of name from sustainable to social. Uh, yep. Social's better because any good dancing and calling is sustainable, and we have not had that in a long time. I think that was a, an opinion more than a comment or a question. Right. Um, he said, you're right on the mark for always being in teaching mode. I hate these blast classes that last two years. I think that pretty much sums it up. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, yeah, I mean, we've tried a whole lot of things, you know, and like they say, you throw a bunch of mud on the wall and see what sticks. But when it comes right back down to it, you just can't beat good teaching and good calling. Yeah. And those are the two things that we're hoping that uh, SSD will help callers learn to uh, control their, their choreography in a way that is, 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 is more pleasing to the dancers. It's not fun to break down. 
and it's not fun to to for the dancers to have to you know be circulating and trading and uh, and going carrying on and on for callers to try to resolve we've got to we got to get our 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 coaches all together on this and i think once this uh once this hits the street and, I, and it catches on just a little bit more, I believe we're going to see uh, something happen, happen with the accredited caller coaches in Caller Lab because we all have to focus on this as well because this is, this is our, our lifeline for all of us. So I think it should be the, one of the top conversations in the uh, ACC uh, community. So far, I have not heard too much about it, and that uh, – is a little bit frustrating to me, but I believe I believe that will change. At least I hope it does. We shall see. Uh, comment here. It's about time someone started talking about simple variety is better than more movements. And uh, I want that symmetry file. Uh, so if Steve or if you can make that available, I can post that into the uh, Facebook and on the forum pages. I've also posted the... Um, Sustainable Square Dance guidelines that are on the Collar Lab website here in the chat. You can download it there, or it's also on the Collar Lab website. Uh, a comment here, getting them dancing for the fun of it will definitely improve attendance. Um, yeah, well, that has been the motto and credo of square dancing since well before I joined. Unfortunately, we were no longer calling for the dancers. We were calling for ourselves for too long. Um, a caller here says he started a group which was an intro to ABC, uh, a, a precursor. Um, that group wanted to be mainstream. They were pushed into it by other dancers or by the rest of the club. And uh, he's looking at starting a separate group from that. That is going to be, I think, what you were saying. The biggest roadblock to this is changing the mindset of not only the callers, but changing the mindset of the existing dancers that if you want to survive, it's not about you. It's about who's going to come after you. Um, you have a comment on that? I think you're absolutely right. I don't see, uh, from my from my vision, I can't see why anybody could turn this down. I can't understand why a plus club, which there are biggest problems today. Every plus club that's rushing dancers through is a culprit of uh, of, of the havoc. It, it's is it's been totally detrimental to this activity to see uh, how we've managed these programs. And we've not done, we've just not been very good stewards when it comes right down to it. And these plus clubs, I know they don't know any different. They've only been dancing for 10 years. This is the way they got into it, beat the crap out of me and, and I love it. And now I'm gonna go get my friends. Well, it's too late, I'm already learning A1. That's what's going on in America. It's obscene. So I, I think that as, t as things roll on here and we've got, we've had these two or three months to refocusing at home, letting our hair grow long and our beards grow long, uh, with this virus thing. I'm hoping, you know, I, I, I hate that, that phrase, never let a crisis pass you by, but you know what, if that's what it takes to get square dancing and people to, again, the big word focus, nothing's going to happen if we all don't focus and if anybody can really come up and tell me a good reason that this is going to hurt anything and that we shouldn't do it, I'm all ears, but I've heard them all. But please ask. I just can't see it. I, I think we should have a worldwide phenomenon going on here. Not because it's my idea. I don't care whose idea it is. Hell, it's Bob Riggs' idea now. He's got the cool name. He can have the credit. Social square dancing. I love it. That's exactly what the doctor ordered. We've got a list of calls. You might not like it. Tough. Pick your own calls in. Got to start. You know, somewhere. it's not that the list is not the big deal. It's right up here in our heads. And we've all got to get through this stuff about having to do it this old fashioned, nostalgic way. It's broken. The whole system is broken. Unless you want to get on this escalator level of programs and you and if that's your mission you you know i want it because your friends are challenged dancers or advanced dancers and they want you to get into it okay fine let's tell them right up front that's where they're going you're going to go over here you don't want to go here because 
they'll better prepare you for that here. They'll take you right on up to where you want to go. And the SSD program is not trying to hoard and hold dancers for themselves. When dancers want to move on, we will show them where that escalator is and how they can go get on it if they want to move on. But we have to be as strict as the contra groups are, guys and gals. I'm being serious with you all now. Listen up. You walk into a contra group and go in and try to steal their dancers to come learn modern Western square dancing, and they will run you out of there with pitchforks and, and shotguns. Well, we might have to carry some pitchforks and shotguns to our dances as well because I'm tired of the guy that sits back and waits for you to teach the class so he can use the level system to rape your and pillage your club. You got to be honest about it. You got to talk about it. You got to put it out there in the open and you got to let them know that they're not welcome. If anybody can figure out a better way to control a society that's hell bent on doing that, now's the place to talk about it. I'm all ears. Just a few more comments and queries. Um, there's one here. Uh, getting him dancing will definitely improve the attendance. There's one here. <laughs> Please don't give my name. Um, <laughs> <laughs> our club puts our dancers through plus and advanced. We've got a good solid club, but they will not do this because they don't know how to dance basic. Okay, well, I think that's a common problem all the way around. I think that one pretty much explains itself right there from what you said. Well, that's, um, that's pretty much the case in point, isn't it? Uh, we need to get a room scheduled in every festival for basic or SSD or whatever there is so that those dancers can experience what a festival offers. I think you've said that regardless of what the program is, SSD is a sociable dancing level. If there is a festival or something, have an SSD room. You'll find that a lot of your mainstream dancers will go into it and they won't even know the difference if they're dancing an SSD program because that's pretty much what's being called now Yeah. Uh, without Spin the Top and Cloverleaf. Um, right. Totally the agree with what was said I... about dance by definition. Uh, it, it's wrong. I'm not sure if this is a wrong or it's uh, the thing is teaching a class and having a guest caller come in and start calling, throwing off the dancers. Uh, I guess that's just a comment on the problem with not having a list or callers calling what they think the dancers can do because everybody's doing it differently. Right. Um, question here, what is your position on lowering the bar of the standard of dancing? Can't get much lower than it is today. Pretty low. Every, every main I've called in the last... 20 years, sure as hell ain't mainstream. The closest in, is in Europe and Japan and Australia. America. They know a subset of the basics. They know a subset of them. They know a subset of the plus. It's an amalgamated list now, of about 60, 70, 80 calls probably. But they don't know anything. It's in it's, it's an entirety. So I, I don't know. Okay. Um, there's it's, about it's a, six or seven comments, but they're all summed up here. Uh, it's good to see a shift back to sociability about the dancers and not about the callers. This is great. Um, Jim Mayo has a book out on the lack of sociability, uh, shifting back to the social aspects of dance, regardless of what is used. That's something that we lost a long time ago and should be the focus of dancers. It should be about the dancers all the time. Um, last one, how low can you go with no dancers? Well, <laughs> I think that question sort of answers itself right at the beginning. Yeah, it, it, it really does. I, I think most of, most of these questions are common sense. I think, you know, if everybody, if everybody can just realize that teach a class basically and stop taking them on the escalator, get them off the escalator and let's try to form this level of dancing that we know we need. And you know what? I, I feel this passionately about it. This activity has been great to me and my family. I owe it more than what I'm able so far to give back. If something like this can, can move and I can move people in this direction, I feel passionate about this, that this is the only way that we can ever be sustainable again. 
if everybody wants to fuss and fight and argue about levels and 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 dbd and apd and ea and yada 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 that's that's not getting us getting us anywhere if we can all focus on teaching classes and don't sit back in the wings waiting for somebody else to do it and then steal their dancers that's what happens the majority of the time and that's what causes the good callers to say to heck with it you know i'm not going to do it and then have somebody steal my dancers and it's a problem it's it's a i don't know if it's a societal thing that we can deal with somehow maybe having these round tables with plus clubs and and associations and but they've got to change their attitude too uh, or we've got to let them go on and I don't know how they're going to be sustainable unless they steal our dancers. Our job should be to make our, pro our program, the SSD program, so darn fun and exciting and, and sociable. Everything that they're not, that's what we need to do, and we'll win. So, again, I think us callers, if you want to do this, it takes more to – to call a good 50 call dance than it does a hundred call plus dance. You got less tools to use. You got to do more homework, and, but we're here to help you. I've never seen a time when so much help to callers has been available. It's, it's phenomenal. And I want to thank everybody that's involved, GSI, Mel, everybody. It's been phenomenal. It really has. I just hope we can all come down off of our high perches and take a look at really what's happening and how much we can as a, as a group. If we focus on something, if it's not this, then come on, tell me. I'll focus on something you want. I don't care. But it's got to be something that we can do multiple times a year so we can do what? Instill our best marketing tool we have. Friends bring friends bring friends. How in the hell can friends bring friends bring friends now when we're on this escalator? It doesn't work. It breaks it all down. So no wonder we're here where we are. We have to stop the escalator, 50 calls, learn how to call it, learn how to entertain dancers. I guarantee you we can pull this activity right back out of the doldrums where we see it today. And if everybody will focus, it wouldn't take but a couple of years and we'd be rolling again. That's a fact. But if, if, no, if we go back to doing the same old things, then nothing will happen. It'll still roll, and this will be rolling down the track. It's not going away. This will be voted in next next spring at Caller Lab, and it's going to run right alongside the other programs. Those that want to jump on can jump on. I hope we get more training and more coaches involved in, in teaching all these elements that we're talking about that create sustainability, the fun, the body flow, the uh, the whole nine yards, the singing calls, the, the timing, get out of this stop-and-go stuff. We don't want puzzles. We want nice flowing routines. We want to go around the barn the other way. It's fun to go this way and that way and down through the middle and around the barn you go that way and then resolve an element left and away you go and we don't have to stop and go after every damned call. I am so sick of this stuff. It has to stop. Or square dancing as we know it, folks, is dead. Period. It has to stop. Just a couple of more things and I'm going to open it up. Uh, so if you guys want to start putting your chat questions into the chat window. Um, one here, it makes a lot of sense if, if your dance, sorry, what is it? If a club doesn't want to change and call it, then callers need to start a brand new separate group that's for SSD. It's hard work, but very doable. You don't need those dancers from the existing clubs to support a new group. And I think you've hit that on that nail. If, if you get dancers come in and they're having a good time and having a social experience, they'll bring their friends in to play with their friends and it will grow from there. Um, the other one is when teaching SSD, do you still teach by the definition, even though you aren't dancing the DVD part? Well, uh, you said that very simply teaching a square through from facing couples is teaching a square through from facing couples. A flutter wheel is a flutter wheel. Reverse flutter wheel is a reverse flutter wheel. If you extended applications and whatnot, very few callers use that all the time now, except in, in different countries uh, where those are still live. And even there, they're, they're getting less and less and less. 
Um, I, I've always been an advocate of your very first night on the floor when you learn circle left, you're dancing by definition because that's what we teach, that's what you <laughs> dance. Everything Absolutely. else is just extended or hyper-extended applications. Um, I'm not. I'm not sure that the dancers ever needed the definitions until they get on up in the levels. You know, I. I. I we never. When I started calling, I. I guess we did. We handed out them little pamphlets 50 years ago, the sets and order books. So they had little diagrams and stuff. And I think we got Taminations today, and they can go there and look at that uh, if they like. I, I kind of encourage that at the classes. Really, it. It, it does help. Uh, but I don't see that as a problem. Okay, there's another comment here that says we're hoping for a lot of SSD modules or clear identification of what existing modules fit. Um, on the program that I put on the screen or that you can download or download from the Caller Lab website, it has not only the list of the calls in the program, but it also has the list of the calls that are not in the program. So it's very easy if you've got your modules to work out what is or what is not, make some adjustments or equivalents to fit them into the SSD program. And I believe on the latest uh, release of the Caller Lab guidelines for SSD uh, on the, the program, another one should be coming out shortly, I've been told, but they have a lot of modules that actually go through the teaching order, very similar to the old Caller Teacher's Manual. Every lesson is laid out. There are working modules for each lesson and you can develop them from there, the same as you do any kind of uh, modules for zeros and boxes and lines, et cetera. Uh, private comment for Jerry, also, will, will you be willing to work with callers before or after the Hummingbird Festival? I would probably suggest maybe they get a hold of you directly to ask those questions. And what was that again? Would you be willing to work with some callers before or after the Hummingbird Festival? I'm assuming that's a local festival. Oh, absolutely. Okay. And absolutely. The last just get, one. Just get in touch with me. We'll set it up. Okay. The last one. If you start teaching SSD and you're five weeks into it, how do you handle the new possible dancer? Well, you'd be halfway through your class at that point. Um, I wouldn't start over. I would, I would tell them in about five or six weeks, we're going to be starting another class yep. and put them in, which is better than, you know, the way it is now, if you have to wait a whole year, you'd be more apt to start your class over just to pick up that one couple. Because today, convention on the conventional classes, you'd have to tell them, well, now you, now you can't get in. You can start over next year. Well, that's not a good thing good selling point, but it's not that hard to tell them, Hey, we're on lesson five or six here. And then we're all, you know, we're in another five, six weeks, we're going to be done. And then, then we're going to start another one. So why don't you just come over and have coffee with us and, and hang out and get to know everybody and, uh, and, uh, just, you know, start dancing when we start again. So yeah, I think, and, I think and, that and, you know, question may have arisen from some confusion because there was a couple of them like that confusion between what was known as the community dance program where you could bring in new dancers and get them on the floor where every dance is a one night stand. That was not and never was the intent of the SSD program, at least from the no. initial concepts that I've seen. It is a short program to teach good fundamental basic and well, I was going to say basic and mainstream, but a good fundamental 50 movement program where you can dance with a lot of variety, a lot of fun, a lot of interest. That's and right. And you bring know, your Mel, friends it, again in 12 weeks and get more. Yeah. And, and there's been numerous studies done. Uh, Jim Mayo's done a couple and some other folks have done studies of, of, of counts, you know, at a mainstream dance or a mainstream weekend, a mainstream festival, how many calls out of the 68 or 69 calls, whatever there is, mainstream calls are being used. It, I'm not sure the accurate number. It's less than 50. I mean, it's not even, so people say, well, you know, I don't want to lose this call or lose that call. I don't, I don't think they really know to tell you the truth, but we're yeah. trying to me, we're trying to protect something that we've, we've already lost. If, if the average, if the average mainstream dance only has 45 calls in it, then <laughs> why are we so worried about losing something? But uh, everybody's got their favorite calls, I guess. And that's where the problem has always lied. But I think we're getting around that too that the, the content is not that important. Uh, the contents that's there now will do just fine and it can be changed. It's not etched in stone. We've got a committee for the social square dancing now. So all they've got to do is get on the committee, make a 
suggestion that we drop this or add that or whatever, and we'll take it up to for a discussion and a vote, and and uh, we can handle it that way. And I I hope everybody can move along and 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 try something new. I'm getting a lot of messages to me privately with questions for for Jerry. I'm please open open up to the chat. The, the chat is open, so if you've got questions, bring them into the room. Uh, comments like some some dancers like puzzles. SSD program is not stopping those dancers from going into other programs and learning the puzzles if they want to do that. But I believe the idea was it will keep a lot of people dancing with their friends, being able to go and dance with their friends without having to worry about the puzzles and the escalator. And uh, I'm going to stop directing questions now. The floor is open. So if you've got questions for Jerry, just please come on and speak up in the room. We've got uh, several minutes left. Jerry's graciously given us a little more time. So. Sure. As much time as you like. The floor is open. I see some questions come through there, what, but they were, they were here and gone. One was from the UK. One was, but I don't see him now. Um, Gene Turner said if you could get two groups going in the same general area, they could stagger one group starting five or six weeks after the first one. That way new dancers would only have to wait a couple weeks maximum. If you've got the resources and the dancers and the program takes off, yes, that would work. That used to work very well with the basic program when we used to I, call basics. Yeah, I think so. And you know, if you're, in a, if you're in an area that lends itself to multiple classes a week, I find that that is really good. And I'll tell you why. I don't think people learn as quickly as they used to. I find it, I find it much more difficult to teach people today than 25 years ago. I don't know why, I can't tell you why, but I can tell you that that's the truth. I don't know why that it's, it's harder to teach them, but, uh, but it is. No, I think I'd be fine. It's if you could do a, a Monday and a Wednesday or a Monday or a Tuesday and a Thursday, or um, if you could get them twice a week, wow. Then you could do all kinds of classes. You could do one right after another, after another, and build as fast as you want to. Because that's when they're hot to trot, right then. They're having so much fun. They'll bring their friends. But if we, if we insist on keeping them in and pounding more calls to them, that's where we lose that friends bring friends. So that's, that's all SSD really does is tries to shut that gate and shut it tight until we can build it up. You just can't keep fishing the pond dry. You know, it's got to be catch and release. <laughs> it's got, yeah. you know. Keith Brown, you had a question. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jerry, we were talking about this earlier in another session, but here's the deal uh, that we've talked a lot about how we're going to, how we should train dancers. And, and I think that the idea of coming at it with a smaller, more socially oriented program, if you will, is fantastic. I've been trying to get one started around here. But we also turn our attention on, on how we train the callers. I remember I went to caller school back in the late 80s, early 90s. And uh, my teachers had this idea about, oh, we're going to teach you how to resolve using site calling. And then uh, just get up there and call and then you're resolving. Somehow or another, I got through it. But you would be amazed at how hard it was to get people on the microphone and just get through a few calls and they weren't sure what you could call from where, hadn't given it much thought. It's just, uh, I think that, you know, at that point, I think you already made a reference to it. It was, it was a total nightmare. So uh, what do we need to do? Do we need to go back and, and do some more timing and, and flow and, and that kind of thing and, and have them start actually having to read if, if, if that's what they need to do? Uh, what do you think we should do here? Well, were you able to see the presentation that I did uh, on cl uh, the class here a m month or so ago? On uh, probably on this not. <laughs> probably not. If you you can yeah. go there to the GSI website and you can watch that. What I was talking about there is is, ex is pretty much uh, what callers should have known before they were asked to site resolve. You guys were asked to do something that you had no idea how to do it or what to do. But had you known relationships and been able to take a look at where you were, you are and know that if you've got one couple paired, you see one couple you know that's paired, the other couple not, that's in a corner box, right? 
Well, even if that oh, box yeah. was rotated, even if that box was rotated to a line, that's still the chicken plucker effect. And it's those kind of things. And you learn those, those visuals. And as you call more and more, you'll see, oh, I'm in the chicken plucker mode. One couple paired, one couple not. And I'm moving all over the place. First couple go left, next couple go right. And, and any time I chain the ladies, then I'll be looking at that person that I know. And when you're looking at that person, then that's the other mode that we dance in. And that's called the invert and rotate mode. You watch that video. And then if you want to um, email me, if you've got some questions or if we can do a Zoom session, any of you, if you would like to do that, I'm always willing to, to help. I'm not calling a whole lot these days. So uh, i got a lot of time at when home you, to take when care you of my mother-in-law. So just let me know. I'll be glad to help you. Yeah, so if you do a caller school, that's what you're, you're doing nowadays, huh? That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm going back and, and reinforcing the, the two uh, pieces of equipment that we have to move dancers around the, the, the dance floor, and that is the invert and rotate mode and the chicken plucker mode. Both of those are the most powerful tools in the world, but if you don't know how to use them, they're not worth a darn. But I can show you in a few lessons just how to, how to use it. There's only a few looks. There's only a couple of looks that you got to know. And, and, you know, these three or four places that you can find, a lead right box, you got to know that. Um, a John Jones box now. We, we've created a John Jones box. That's, that's a pass-through trade buy. If you can see that, well, that's site calling. But it's, it's, a lot of callers can see that, but they didn't, they didn't realize the significance of it. John Jones didn't. He could see it, sure, pass-through, trade buy. But he didn't know where a right-hand lady line was. And once I told him, John, star through right there instead of doing a pass-through trade buy. Star through. There's your right hand lady line. That's the same line that when I went to caller school after I was told by Clinton McLean that my choreography sucked. In 1971, I went to caller school and Earl Johnson was picking on me and said, All right, promenade, don't slow down. Girls roll back like a Chinese fan and promenade your left hand man. Heads wheel around, make a line of four, and story, get them out. I was never so scared in my life. I have no clue where they were. He said, that's a right-hand lady line. Don't ever forget it. And here's your get out. <laughs> square through four. Now, we didn't have trade by yet. We had barge through and square the barge. We had a trade by in it, but it wasn't called trade by yet. So we did a square through four from there, right to the partner, pull by, and Alaman left your corner. Do you yeah. think I ever forgot that? But it was the way... Uh -huh. It was the way they coached back then. If, if we coached that way today, they'd be, oh, my God, he scared me. You know, we've got to be so light with, with people, and I understand that. But at the same time, there's something, there's something about being a football coach that kind of knocks you upside the head and, and helps you learn too. So never be afraid to go to a football-type coach. You just might learn something. I've, I've – Posted the link to your uh, presentation at the GSI school on relationships. Uh, it's also available on the GSI website. So if you, if you don't have the link to that, just Google GSI cool. caller school and go to the presentations. You'll see them there. Uh, Jerry cool. mentioned earlier the list. I don't know if you guys can all see my screen there, but that's essentially the list that's in the document that was attached. And as you can see, there's a lot of material on that list. This is the important part that he was talking about. That's the only thing that's not on the list. Can I talk about those just for a little bit? Absolutely. Um, here's a suggestion to, if for some of you that are, are thinking about using the program. When you... Uh, when you finish your 50 lessons, you've done with recycle and you're just dancing now for a few weeks before you start another class. And uh, even after the new class gets going, you're always looking for something uh, to equalize the floor. We don't want to put them, we want to take them out of teach mode, but at the same time, you don't want to take them, take the teaching part completely away from them because that's an, an enjoyable part. When I was first started to call, we always, the second or third tip, taught something. A lot of times it was an experimental. Flip your widget, relay your wing ding, whatever. 
Well, there were disposable calls. They were used to equalize the floor. You have dancers that danced for two or three years. You got dancers that just came out of a 12 week class that are, are pretty rough. And so you get them all together and you show them, flip your widget and you all have fun with it for the night. And then you throw it away. You can do that same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. You can do that same thing with the mainstream calls. Um, I wouldn't do one after another every week, but say one week uh, you want to show them uh, uh, spin the top, show it to them, have fun with it. Um, you want to do walk and dodge one week? Fine. How long does it take to teach? It, you know, anything you want to do, show it to them quickly and have some little ditties worked up for it. Move them around the floor. Use your symmetry value if it's there and, and really focus on paying attention to the, and you'll notice I use that word a lot if you watch that presentation on relationships. Uh, so uh, paying attention and recognizing where you're at, that's the type of site calling that will do you a world of good. And then you won't even worry about site resolution anymore. It'll take, that'll take care of itself. You'll see where you're at. So why do you need site resolution? You don't need to be circulating and trading people until you accidentally pair somebody up. Just, you won't need to do that. Just hone in on the stuff that's in that we're talking about the chicken plucker mode, one couple paired, one couple not. That's all that means. And then the invert and rotate mode where you're looking at the person that you know, instead of having them stand side to side. And it, it, it explains what invert and rotate mode and, and effect and all that means in that presentation. So uh, enjoy that. It's, it's a, uh, it's a lot of stuff there. We went way over. It's about an hour and a half. So be prepared for a good session if you do watch it. Anyway, that's my take on the, on the extra calls. It's just a good way to, it's a good way to beef up your show every week. You know, uh, have something prepared, maybe a, a one mainstream call, maybe something else you can, you know, maybe it's just symmetry to a call. Maybe it's, uh, uh, you're going to do a, a normal spin the top and you're going to do, uh, you're going to use the conversion module that we know the magic module uh, with symmetry. Maybe that's your game plan for that night. Uh, so you would, you would work spin the top, maybe the, the second tip. So now you can use spin the top the rest of the night. You just use it one way. So boys walk up, probably do a right and left through and then probably square through three and swing the corner and promenade if that's what you're working towards for a singing call. And then if you want to use the symmetry and use the conversion module, that's the only other mode that we get into other than the chicken plucker and invert and rotate, we have conversion modules. So if head square through four, swing through, the conversion module would be girls circulate, boys trade, boys run, bend the line. Use the uh, symmetry version of that. The dancers will love it. Heads left square through four, left swing through, boys circulate, girls trade, girls run, bend the line. You convert it to a partner line. And that is something that the dancers would enjoy. It's a four equalizer. Uh, your stronger dancers probably never did that. Your two-year -year dancers probably never done that either, maybe. So symmetry is a valuable thing. You're going to hear more and more and more about that as you get involved with SSD. It's a big part of it because symmetry promotes good dancing. Symmetry, it's just the word symmetry, this way and that way. Flutter wheel and reverse flutter wheel, it's a beautiful thing. A lot of symmetry is a beautiful thing. We just haven't paid too much attention to it over the years. And I hope, I'm hoping that uh, the attention that's being brought to it now, that more caller, callers will start investigating it and, and see, my gosh, there's, a, there's, there's a, a lot of stuff here that really the dancers should know before they know motivate or relay the doocy or load the boat. Just, just as an outline, uh, this is the document that's on the Color Lab website. I've posted it in the chat window a couple of times. Um, but the way it's laid out, it's an introductory document. There's a bit of background. It's the, what it's about, the program. The lesson plans are laid out just like the old-fashioned caller text. You've got 12 weeks of lessons, what movements you've got. You've got your lesson plan with your tick box going through the 12 weeks so you can tick off to make sure what you've actually done through the lesson plans. Then each lesson, this is lesson one, and there's a number of pattern modules. And of course, as you go through it, you'll be making up your own modules, as Jerry said, you know, you using the movements that you have, you get to a corner box, you just do some two couple dancing that uses the movements that you have in that box. 
You go to lesson two, or sorry, there's singing call figures, breaks, and figures within the program because it's not just here's some patter figures. It's a full program of patter call, of singing call, of modules based on the movements that you know. And then when you get to the next one, lesson two, it builds on what you know and adds more. And as you can see, a few things are highlighted. That shows you where your emphasis is. And again, the same thing, more singing call modules. Lesson three, all laid out the same way. And as you go through it, you get down towards the end, you notice a couple little color changes. Where are we here? When we get down to the end, still part of the SSD program, but these are the slightly extended applications. You know, you've got the reverse flutter wheel on here. You've got a, a couple of other things, just a little bit different, but still well within the program parameters. And this is a these, lot of... Go ahead. Mel, these, these would be an example of one of those workshop things, disposable workshop things that you may want to pull out. That's enough material for 10 dances, 20 dances. You just pick out one or two of those. One of them is probably enough for one tip and, and, and feature that. And then you've got a tool that you could use the rest of the night. If they handle it well, you might be able to get to. But these are, these are meant more in a disposable fashion, not to necessarily keep making them better dancers. Yep. We don't really – we want them to be nice, smooth dancers, but we don't want them to memorize a lot of calls. We don't want them to have to know 100 different calls. We want them to know 50 calls. And then anything we want to play with, that's just a throwaway call. And I think we almost have to be careful with that, that we don't overdo that. We kind of overdid that years ago, and it kind of come back to bite us because all the stuff that we were using ended up being a program that come back to bite us in the butt. That's called the plus. All of those were disposable workshop, new experimental calls. And we were using them as we traveled all over the country dancing. All of us were using it. Second, third tip, workshop something, equalize the floor. Great tool, but we overdid it. I think uh, we kind of killed the pooch there, but that's just my, my opinion. So I'd, I'd be careful with that. I'd be more apt to focus and hone in on, on really working those 50 calls with a little bit of symmetry. And there's just an absolute world of choreography. But if you want to venture out into a little bit deeper stuff, that stuff in red would be the next, the next step in line if you want to venture out that way. Um, there was a question asked that we covered. I think you, you may have missed it. The question asked earlier, is there a list somewhere of the calls that are not on the list? Well, that's in that document that I've just reattached as well. But as Jerry said, it's better to focus on what you can call rather than what you can't call because there's a lot of material. If all you're thinking about is spin the top, that's the only thing that's going to be in your mind is spin the top. Oh, I can't call that movement. Don't even think about it. Just you follow the program, follow the list. It's just like learning the basic and mainstream program. You've got so many movements that you can do as you teach. Those are the only ones you use on the program. Um, as I said, the floor is open. I'm going to stop the sharing there. Jerry? Yo! Hey, Jerry. Jeremy here. Hey, uh, Jeremy. I, hey. I just wanted to mention that, um, you know, you were talking about stealing dance, and I've really found that that's not even a problem because what ends up happening is somebody comes in and asks them to come, hey, why don't you come see our club and come dance with us, and then they end up going there. And they come back to the SSD, and if you're doing it right, and they're having a good time and dancing, wind in their face, having a great time, they come back and they go, man, those people can't dance. They stink. <laughs> Why would I want to go back over there? It's, and, it, and it's really a phenomenal thing when you look at it that way. Yeah. I, I hear what you're saying. I, I, still, think, I still think it's a, a strong pull. We had uh, – Every, every lesson that we have, I mean, as people get into it and they dance a while, you always have those that learn quicker than others. And it's a human nature for the angels to tell them, hey, you guys are ready to go on. And we had the angels taking some of these people 90 miles because we wouldn't teach them plus in our area. We, we just get together and we're not doing it. 
and we're going to build up this base and we're not doing it. The angels took couples 90 miles to Quincy, Illinois to learn the plus calls. It was amazing. So rather than to be happy dancing to Jerry Story and Tom Manning and Robin Reagan and, and all the other callers here in Southeast Iowa, nope. That pull, that is a strong pull. So I understand what you're saying, but at the same time, the problem's always going to be there, isn't it? Yeah, well, you know, the way we take care of it in our group, because um, I do, the, I use the SSD program, um, the, the way that we take care of it is we just basically educate our new dancers. So we tell them, hey, look, you know, there's other groups out there. They're learning more and more calls. Um, and we don't want to pressure you to learn all those calls. We want you to move at your own pace. And that's why we have this, why we're using this program. We want you to be comfortable before you move on. And if you're not comfortable, then you don't need to don't move on. Stay here and dance. Right. Mike. Uh, you're probably right. That's, what, else can, what else can we do? Yeah. You know? Mike Gormley has raised his hand. It was, Mike, you got some background noise on you, which is why I kept muting you. But I believe you had a question for Jerry. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me? Hi, Mike. Hi. Um, Mike Gormley from Sebring, Florida. Um, back in the ABC days, you put out some videos of examples of how an ABC dance would go. Are there any videos on YouTube um, showing SSD? I don't know that we've got any yet. It's something that we are talking about. But before we did that, I was going to make sure that there weren't going to be any major changes to the list. And I didn't know how everything was going to shake out yet. You don't want to put all the time and money into pr producing videos and then have a like have wheel around and go off the, you know, there's already been people say, well, why, why is wheel around on the first lesson? Well, we have reasons for that. You know, it's uh, we're going to use that call because we're not going to teach right and left through for quite a while. And there's a reason for that. We don't want to teach right and left through before square through because we don't like it when they learn square through, then they've learned, they've done so darn many right and left throughs that they're courtesy turning right in the middle of a square through. So if we, if we don't do right and left through until way later on, we've got pass through and wheel around, which is a right and left through. So we still have the choreography. We've got a call that's versatile. Also, you can use it with symmetry. And the, we can do square through, and then we can save right and left through for later on. And when we do teach it, it's not even like it was a call to teach. They already know it. So there's reasons and some logic behind that list. If you don't understand something or if you wonder – why don't be afraid to ask I can I can explain every call on there and why it's it is the way it is so Jerry there was two rather lengthy videos that covered different segments of a couple of recent festivals going back uh, 2018 2017 uh, in, in I decided to have a look at them and a lot of people can do this just pull up some of the square dance festivals or some of the the dancing that's out there but this one festival I went through seven tips uh, one of the singing calls had walk around your corner, seesaw your own, and the movement spin the top was used, uh, I think, 11 times over those seven tips. Other than that, everything was on the sustainable square dance program. Walk around your corner and, and 11 spin the tops. That was it. That was the entire festival program. So right. and, and I'm just saying that right now to highlight, there are a lot of callers that use spin the tops, that use walk and dodge, that use Dixie style. Um, use spin chain through yeah they're, they're great movements but the festival was well attended everybody was having a good time nobody mm -hmm. noticed in the mainstream hall that hey with the exception of spin the top and walk around your corner seesaw your own on a, on one singing call it was the ssd program yeah so, so yeah. keep that in mind when you think about it uh what jerry said right at the beginning we're basically doing this now and where we get extended in DBD is we start forcing the definitions down the throat in a way that they're just not comfortable, they're not normal, they're not real, they fit the technical definition, but they're not really that danceable. I don't know any dancers that could tell you the definitions anyway. I don't, I mean, I, I, I really think, you know, Jim Mayo said it a lot, a lot of times, you know, 
definitions there for the, for the callers, you know. And uh, I think uh, we got a little carried away with the with the dance by definition. It took a it took a lot of the the body flow mechanics away, and we got a, a lot of the stop and goness come from from the DBD stuff. Uh, it's when it's so hard uh, that you have to stop and look what you're where you're at to get to get oriented to go to the next spot. Um, that's something other than what I would consider dancing. That's a, that's a different game. I, I, I like that game. I like to play that game. Uh, but I would rather them play that game with me on tempo, on time, on, if I'm supposed to know it, I'm supposed to know it. Don't give me extra beats to figure it out. Why, what's fair about that? You know, if you're a good enough dancer, why in the hell do you need those extra beats all the time? Come on, let's just call it. No, they can't do it. That's why the dancers can't do it. They can't do it unless they stop and go. That's why there's so many people dancing advanced today. If they called it on beat, half of them couldn't even do it. But if you stop after every call and let them get oriented and call something else and then hide it with the, in the, with the guise of, oh, they're getting old, uh, bull hockey, they're not getting old. That's a, that's a cop out if I've ever seen one. The same age they've always been. You know, they can dance. They can dance on tempo. You just, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot of factors go into this stop and go stuff. It's not just, it's not just the escalator of levels that do it. Uh, that's a big contributor, but it's also callers, us, letting dancers climb up that ladder unprepared. How is, how is a C1 dancer supposed to dance that never really was taught basics or mainstream? And if you called a DVD mainstream dance, they probably couldn't even do it. So, Sometimes I think the levels are kind of a joke, a big joke, really. With the callers, we've loved it. We've used it to make money and get people in our door. And, and uh, has it been healthy? Yeah, it has been for those that have went on bowling if we hadn't to give them C1 or C2 or advanced. Maybe we held them from going on to something else, you know, for a while and staying with the activity. But what was the sacrifice? What was the trade off for that? Many callers then not having the time to devote to new dancers. Everybody was chasing that prize of plus and advanced and on up we go. Too many callers are, are, are teaching advanced and, and not teaching basics today. Too many callers are just starting their programs at plus. They wouldn't even consider teaching a class. They just wait in the wings for the new dancers to come around and, and offer their wear. And, and it's pretty hard to stop. So I think Jeremy was right, educating our own dancers and creating more fun at this particular level and forgetting the DVD and, and the, the extended applications and all of that. Uh, and work a little bit of symmetry into it because symmetry is a beautiful thing. And I, I, I really think that that statement that we have on our mainstream program, that these calls should be taught from more than a single formation, that, that has to go. That's nostalgic. Uh, nobody knows what it means. It's so broad. Uh, you know, it, it, it sure, sure doesn't promote standardization, does it? Mm -hmm. I can't see where anything coming out of that statement would be anywhere as close to standard. There'd be every caller would have his own interpretation. But if you took symmetry, we're all on the same page now. There's not a lot of it. There's just a little symmetry that's good symmetry with several different calls. A lot of it is bad. It's not that good. Like I said, left and right through would be a, something that's not good. Uh, you know, there's no symmetry to a lot of calls, but there's a great symmetry to several calls. And uh, I think it's worth investigating anyway. It could help a lot of callers figure out what that statement meant. Did, and and do you, does everybody realize why that statement was even put, a, put in there 40 years ago? The reason that statement, these calls should be taught from more than a single formation and an arrangement, the reason that they were put, that, that statement was put in there was because we were scared that, that, the, that, that, that the sucking sound that you heard coming out of these mainstream clubs being sucked up to plus, you were going to need earmuffs to deafen the sound. And we knew that, and we were scared. So they put that on there, well, thinking that maybe that will slow that rush to plus down. Well, now we're asking callers to do something that most callers didn't have a clue how to do, if they did understand that statement, they took it to the far extreme, and lo and behold, 
our all of our standardization went flying out the window. We're not dancing the same here as they are in, in Denmark. We're not dancing the same here as they are in Germany. We're not dancing the, and you know, everybody's dancing something a little bit different. And I think Japan has seen what we're talking about with the stop and go stuff being on that escalator of levels. They've, they, 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 they seen it. We talked about it when I did a caller's uh, clinic over there last year. Uh, and they're working hard to, to make sure that new dancers have a place to stop and dance for a couple years before they continually just stay in teach mode and, and go on. Uh, they, they notice now when they go to festivals that their new dancers have time, have a hard time dancing if the callers are calling steady Eddie. But if you stop and go, you can get away calling a lot of intricate material. So there's a give and take. I, I just don't like to stop and go. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up good, solid dancing for more intricate choreography. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go with the simpler stuff and make it smooth and beautiful and flowing every time. That's, that's just me not saying that if you want to do the other hop on it, you know, it's a free world, do what you want. We're just trying to do something different that we can add more people to all the time without keeping them in progression up, up, up. We want them to stay here. It's harder because we have to do more work to entertain them. But I do believe that our, that our efforts will be paid off in big dividends if we can all get together and focus. Good morning, Jerry. Um, Good Brian morning. Hutchman. I know you. Um, hey, you're the guy that takes his pants off while you're calling with him. I know you. You've been talking to Tony <laughs> Oxendine, haven't you? <laughs> How you doing, Brian? Uh, I'm probably one of the Probably one of the few callers here this morning that uh, remembers what Squid Ants looked like before we had levels. And uh, I think bringing in the levels was great, but it also um, encouraged people to go from one level to the other and then say to people, if you're dancing mainstream, oh, I'm dancing mainstream, you only dance basic, you know, you should come up and dance mainstream. And I think this is going on and on and on through the levels. You dance plus, oh, you've you only dance mainstream. Well, you should be dancing plus. You know, come up to our plus club. Yep. And this is causing so much trouble in the activity, I think. I believe so, too. And um, talking about the um, knowing the definitions, I was amazed in Germany. A lot of the dancers over there know how, how the movements go, the, the definitions of the figures. Whereas uh, in many other countries, some of the callers don't know the definitions. Absolutely. Okay. Just amazing. Anyhow, good morning, it everybody. Is. Nice to see you, Brian. <laughs> you too, Jerry. Um, if nobody else is talking, when we were when you were talking about square through and uh, not teaching square through, um, not teaching right and left through before you teach square through, um, I used to be like that too. But I was talking to a, a caller in America when Steve. Turner and I went over there in 1985 and uh, he said he doesn't have any trouble with um, the dancers doing a courtesy turn after the first hand of a square through because he teaches it from a half sachet position. Well, that'll so work dance. too. Yeah. Sure. And I, I, in a beginner's class, I did that to start with, but then I found I had two boys facing each other. If I had head couples half sachet and then square through, I then had the the issue that I now have two boys facing each other, what do I do next? Um, yeah. And I found that if I did head men take your corner up to the middle and back and square through four, um, then you can go straight into a right and left grand or straight into a swing your partner or whatever. Um, right. And I had callers say, but why do you teach it half sachet? Because it's so much harder to do half sachet. It's not harder to do half sachet. If you don't know how to do it the other way, Half sachet square through is just as easy as doing it the normal way around. Not harder to do. I agree. Harder to call. <laughs> um, okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Jerry came in about an hour early. He's been here. We're now a half hour past our allotted time. Uh, he's graciously offered to stay and answer any questions or discuss anything that you want. But uh, right now, I'd like to thank Jerry for uh, coming and giving this talk. As I said at the beginning, what I really wanted to do with this, there are a lot of opinions about um, sustainable square dancing. 
about what it is. Some people are against it. Some people are for it. Some people are politically vociferous, violently so, saying if you don't do it, you're an idiot. Other people say, well, it's going to ruin dancing. It's going to be A, B, C, and D. Uh, there are a lot of opinions out there, but as one great caller once said, opinions are like the back end of a northbound cow. Everybody's got one. <laughs> Um, where it goes to is Jerry, when he brought this up and developed the program, it is what it is. If you want to know what it's about, ask him. He'll tell you what it's about, where it goes, what it can be, what it is, and what it isn't. So now you at least have all the facts and figures. You've got the copies of the program. You can make up your own mind with an objective viewpoint knowing right from the horse's mouth, no offense, Jerry, but uh, knowing right <laughs> I've been from, called worse. <laughs> knowing right from the source what it is is being talked about. These variations of SSD plus three or SSD to plus, or I do my own 50 movement program taking through to plus for my club, that's not SSD, that's not what it was. Now you know what it was, so you can make up your own minds about the program. So Jerry, on behalf of myself and everybody here, I wanna thank you very much for taking your time. Uh, Thank you. If you want to stick around and answer questions, by all means, I'll leave the room open, but I'm going to stop recording now. All right. I'll stick around if anybody has any questions. If not, 